Hey beautiful, welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, it's your girl Farida, also known as Curly Proverbs or CP, or the Ayurveda queen, you take your pick. Around here, there's no kinks, no curls, and no coils left behind. We are all about that natural, holistic, Ayurvedic approach to hair care, and we get results that bang. People are gaining inches, and in today's video, we're gonna be looking at my two absolute ride or die favorite ayurvedic hubs i have been using them both for a decade and i often get questions on what is the difference between the two so in this video we're going to be doing a henna versus amla it's like asking me to choose between my two kids it's pretty much impossible but i'm going to break it down for you let's go Okay guys, but before we get into the henna versus amla saga, I do have to give a massive shout out and thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Tangle Teaser. Guys, I go way back with this brand. I mean, I think I picked up my first thick and curly Tangle Teaser six years ago and it has served me all this time. Admittedly, it's kind of getting to that point in its life where it has seen better days and I need to take it down to the Tangle Teaser recycle program, but um alas it has done a good job all these years and i was so excited to find out that they have released an afro comb <laughs> literally the only thing i felt was missing from the collection and when i say it did its magic on my hair don't take my word for it let, let me just show you I know, right? The difference is night and day in the volume. The reason it works so well is it has these really long teeth, U-shaped, and it is bottle shaped right here. So it glides through the hair very well, designed for 3C to 4C hair. Um, and it really makes a massive difference in the volume. Just be sure to use it from the roots on out. The base two inches for insane, insane volume. I'm gonna have this product linked in the description box below so you can check them out. Um, but now let's get into Henna versus Amla. Okay, so let's get into Henna and Amla. Literally, I have been using them for a decade. Henna was my first love and discovery. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is breaking down a few different categories so that you can make a fair comparison. We're gonna be talking about one, the properties, the overall properties and benefits of using each of these powders. The second thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about what can you expect from these particular powders over time what do they smell like how do you prep your hair for application what mixes well with them and finally you're actually going to be able to see an application wash out and see the results how they compare side by side so if that sounds good do be sure to hit this video with a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed because a little birdie told me <coughs> analytics that 50 percent of you that regularly watch my videos have not subscribed is that you do me a favor and hit that button now. So let's talk about the two. Henna, as I say, was the first herb that I came across, well known. In fact, my mother used to use it in my hair when I was about nine back in West Africa, not on any consistent basis, just like maybe once every other year, like literally we would just go in and use a henna treatment. Now henna is, an amazing, amazing herb because it's one of the only Ayurvedic herbs that builds up on your hair over time. Because if you imagine that this is a strand of hair, all the way down the hair, you're gonna have shingles, kind of like roof tiles. And if any of them go missing, the cuticles 
go missing, you're gonna end up with damage to your hair. Over time, your hair is gonna become really raggedy and break easily and have really fragile points. What henna does is it actually fills in almost like polyfiller, those areas where you have missing cuticles. And the beautiful thing about it is it actually builds up over time. So it's gonna bind and continue binding and building with each and every application. So it has a cumulative effect on the hair and it can actually serve to thicken the strand of hair as well. The only downside to it is it can actually cause elongation of hair over time in some women. And that's why we'd always recommend with using a, a new Ayurvedic ingredient, definitely do a strand test just to see if you like how it engages with your hair. The other thing is that the active ingredient in it is called the Lawson dye. It is released when you allow the um, henna to sit for four hours. You know, you're gonna have high levels of Lawson release and that's actually the active ingredients that does most of the, the good work um, that henna actually does to the hair. That means though, that if you're using henna in your hair, you're gonna end up having some sort of a reddish brown tint. That is desired by some and not others, okay? So if you have a full head of gray hairs, bear in mind, you're gonna have a coppery red tone emerge from your hair. And once you've applied it, you might have like a light tint of brown in the sun, but it might change over the next few days and become deeper and settle okay so for black hair you're not really going to see all that much but if you have blonde hair and if you have gray hairs you definitely should bear this in mind and again do a strand test so that is henna in a nutshell it accumulates over time and it can color your hair but it's bomb it really really is and it really does impart strength for the first application amla on the other hand this is basically indian gooseberry so it's actually made from a high vitamin c content containing fruit that can be dried down and put into powder form now the amazing thing about amla is actually it does the opposite um, in long term to what henna does and it actually tightens the curl okay it actually causes it to tighten up as part of the process of its treatment so if you're going through like elongated curls curl damage amla might be something that you want to give a try it can contrary to henna actually stimulate the melanin in your hair and cause the darkening of your strands so bear that in mind over time it can cause a darkening of hair so again if you have blonde hair um, you might want to think about that or if you have um, color treated hair definitely this would be the probably the safer of the two if you've got lighter hair, but just bear it in mind and again, do a strand test. Now they actually mix very, very well together. Um, and Amla, in my opinion, has less slip than henna does simply because it's made of a different part of the plant. Henna is made of the leaves and amla is actually made of the Indian gooseberries. So there's a quick overview of the two. Remember, amla doesn't need to be left to sit before you apply it and henna needs to be left to sit for four hours. Next category. As far as prepping your hair for using both the products, you do have to start, or it's actually best to start with cleansed hair, thoroughly cleansed hair. You really want um, these um, powders to be able to penetrate deeply into your hair. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna have thoroughly clean hair. You know, you don't want to have to have the herbs work their way past build up on the strands at all. So that's the first step. The second thing is spritzing down the hair or making sure it's damp or making sure it's freshly washed before you apply um, would actually be very um, beneficial because it lifts the cuticles and it allows the properties to really penetrate. So having moisture in the hair, having it freshly washed really allows that to happen. The other thing I would suggest for prepping your hair for application is definitely to have it in sections when you're applying it. And girl, if you are using henna, you need to put some respect on its name and find you a pair of gloves because unless you like orange palms and orange nails and 
messed up manicures, then you're definitely gonna wanna use some gloves. So prepare for your henna application by doing that. And also what you might wanna do to make sure that your skin here doesn't get, you know, all discolored, maybe apply some kind of a balm, maybe some melted sheer butter or something really, really thickly so that you don't get a color transfer. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so these herbs combine really well, first of all, with each other, and also with a wide range of Ayurvedic herbs, depending on your hair needs. So you can reach for some shikaika, you can reach for some jaman, you can reach for pretty much a wide range, um, definitely some of the most versatile Ayurvedic herbs, that's for sure. Um, they combine well with hot water, not boiling, because the kinetic energy in the hot water allows all the goodness to be released a whole lot quicker. For example, the Lawson dye is able to, to exit the powder much faster and be available, bioavailable for your hair and your scalp. So definitely bear that in mind. Um, also, you can mix it with coconut milk, you could add honey, you could add yogurt. You could add olive oil, castor oil, but just bear in mind, aloe vera, aloe vera juice, aloe vera powder, but do bear in mind though, that butters and oils can impede the uptake of the Lawson dye and in fact, the benefits of amla. Um, you kind of have to uh, get your head around the fact that it's super strengthening and you might need that oil to dilute it down for your hair to be able to access it without being overpowered and you also need to bear in mind that if you want the full strength of it keep away from oils and butters in your mix okay so they both smell very leafy i would say that the henna smells like mustard greens and chard like if your mum ever like makes that or sog if you've ever had that in a restaurant and uh, in an indian restaurant it smells just like that and um amla smells similar but has a little bit of a a sharp sweet undertone to it as well they they smell basically very very herby not offensive at all and remember that you can boost the benefits by adding your favorite essential oils my favorite at the moment is basil but i also lo love to use rosemary i also love to use lavender tea tree peppermint all of these really pack a punch um, and in very very small amounts they're very very potent so um yeah let's get into um, mixing and application okay guys so this is the mixing and application portion of the video hence the lack of makeup because we're about to jump into the shower still we move looking dusty but it's okay so these are the two powders in question um if you look at the appearance of them you can see that the amla is more of a pale sort of beige kind of color and then the henna has more of a green hint to it so let's go in we've got some hot water it's cooled down a good amount right so hot water so add the water it's a beautiful texture really a really good a really good um quality henna you want to look for a body art quality henna um and also the green color of it should not be too stark and sharp you know, because then that might suggest something's actually been added to it, but you should be able to see that it's green. Okay, now, normally I would go in with something to help um, balance out the strength of the henna. And normally I would use like melted shea butter. However, on this occasion, because I know that butters and oils do mask the effect of Ayurvedic herbs, and I really want when you guys see my hair reveal and you want, I want you to see it apply to the hair, I want you to see the difference, I'm gonna stay away from using um, that amount of oil. So instead I'm just adding some aloe vera juice. What this does is it's great for the pH of the whole mixture. It really does help with the uh, sealing of the cuticles afterwards as well and giving a wonderful shine. Um, so here you go, you can see the lumps are disappearing yeah so i'm just gonna let that sit i'm uh, mixing this first because it actually needs to sit for a little while and then i'll go back to mixing it hopefully get the rest of the, the lumps out
okay at this point. I'm just gonna go in with my splash of aloe vera. So I'm about to make it be too much. Can you see the orange that's being released on the surface of this one? When I move it like that, can you see? I don't know if, if the camera is picking this up, but on the surface, you can see the green. And then when I'm stirring, you can see where the Lawson dye is coming out. That's that good stuff, right? I'm gonna come back to trying to get the lumps out of this. And the lumps in the amla are pretty easy to get out. But again, just allowing it to sit for a little while, I'm gonna come back to it. Okay, so it's all mixed up and I'm just gonna go through and first of all, you wanna get basically a cake batter-like consistency with both of these. As I say, you have to leave that for four hours for the Lawson dye, which is the active ingredient to be released before application. Whereas with the Amla, you don't really have to wait. And um, yeah, I am going to redampen my hair. This is cleansed hair, it's been washed, there's no product that's been put on it. Um, and that really helps with the absorption of the um, goodness into the hair. Also you wanna spray it down, dampen it or wet it, which allows for the lifting of the cuticles so that the particles are able to penetrate and get locked in. And of course, as you know, henna actually binds to the cuticles of your hair. So it's best for it to be cleansed and unimpeded by oils when it's doing that. So let's dump in this hair and let's apply. Okay hey guys, so temporarily lost my mind. And guys, just wanna show you, I picked up the henna and then I remembered what, what I was working with. Put some respect on henna's name because it took about 20 seconds to make my hands this orange. So don't be a Farida. So guys, I've just had to mix up a little bit more of the henna because I ran out. And you can see straight away, see the difference in color between the original henna color versus after it's starting to oxidize. And mind you, I have not left it for the recommended four hours yet. It's just probably been about 40 minutes. Okay guys, time to rinse this out. Um, yeah, let's, let's just get to it. You know it's gonna be an absolutely messy job, um, but I could feel the strength already being imparted into my hair, so I'm super excited. It's been a minute since I've done a full mask. Let's get it.
Okay guys, so I hope you found this video to be useful. Do let me know below what you thought of it. Have you used Amla and Henna before? Do you mix them? Do you use them separately? Comment and let the others know what your experience has been of these particular ingredients. And also please do check out the link in the description box below where you can pick up or have a look at the um, Tangle Teaser Afro Pick. As I say, it's absolutely bay really sturdy really good quality I've had a few snap on me just because they've just been poor quality but I've been using this for some weeks now and I have been so impressed um, with it so definitely check it out it's linked below and I will see you in the next video deuces